Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you the Scaffold Schema Designer. The Schema Designer is the backbone of every Scaffold application. It's where you define your GraphQL schema, which in turn defines your GraphQL API. It's got a lot of powerful features, so let's dig in. This is a blank app, it's brand new, I haven't added anything. But by default, you can see we get a few things. Most notably, the user type. A user type in Scaffold is able to handle authentication by default. You can also define complex permissionings on them. For example, we have role-based permissions, we have relation-based permissions that use the edges in your path, or edges in your graph. We also just have plain old authenticated or not. All of those can be combined together to make a complex access control system. Next, we can note that there's the node interface. So the node interface looks simple. It has a single field ID of type ID, but it's actually really powerful. Every type that implements the node interface is backed by a table in our relational data store. That means that that type will be both directly queryable as well as can be used in connections. Next, you'll note the blob interface. The blob interface is another special interface. It looks simple as well, but every type that implements blob is backed by S3 and if you're on a paid tier, a CloudFront CDN. This can, get, this can compound on each other as you can mix and match these special data source interfaces to add functionality to types. For example, look at the file type. The file type implements both node and blob. That means that we can both directly query file, we can also use file and connections, and because it implements blob, we can store a file that'll get stored on S3. Next you'll notice that we also have a nums. So by default, we give you an access level of num that's used for our role authentication. We have a credential type that's used as you add social authenticated pr authentication providers. Um, and various other things, like the timestamped interface that comes by default with all node interfaces. So if you're using a node interface, you might as well use timestamped. Next, you can notice that we have a couple things in the toolbar. So we have collapse all, we have uncollapse all, we have fuzzy search. So once your schemas get large, you can search and find the types really easily. You also have these little toggles that allow you to only show certain types of, of types. And you'll see this add type button. So let's go ahead and add an interface. So we're going to add an interface called flyable and it's going to have a single field called number of wings and it's going to be an int and you have to have it. Cool. So we're going to add that. So now as an object oriented programming, you can have like a type in implements interfaces in GraphQL or like a class implements interfaces in object oriented programming in GraphQL, a type can impl implement interfaces. So for example, we might add, a type called rocket ship. And this would also implement the flyable interface. And then by default, you'll see that it auto adds that field. But then we might also have another, say, say now we want to extend our interface with an enum. So let's have an enum called fuel source. And the fuel source is either nuclear or gas powered or stick or, or fi steam powered or uh, let's go with uh, like a hydrogen power hydrogen fuel cell cool so we'll create that and let's say we wanted to go update our interface so you might think there might be a problem because updating the interface if the rocket ship doesn't implement that doesn't have that field it might cause a bug what you'll see is if we go ahead and add a field to our interface, and let's call it fuel source, and it's going to be of type fuel source, and we click create, then every type that implements the flyable interface automatically gains that type, or that field. So now let's add one more type just for, for demonstration purposes. So this one let's call plane, and this is also going to implement flyable. I'm going to click create. And now we're good to go. So now we've got our plane, we've got our rocket ship, they both have fuel source, number of wings, we can add more specific plane things to the plane and more specific rocket ship things to the rocket ship. And we can really start building out our complex data model really easily. The cool part is that we, as we've been poking around, every time that we created a node implementing type, or even something that implements blob, Scaffold automatically handles all the migratory tasks to get the backend infrastructure to match your schema. So now all, all you have to do is go to graphical and you have a production GraphQL API running ready for you to use it. So we can go ahead and fire off our mutation and create a plane. And 
And then let's grab the ID, the number of wings, and that's all we really have right now. So then we're gonna go ahead, add this, put a plane in there, and then we're gonna say, okay, our plane has two wings. And we're gonna click create. There we go. And now we can do the same thing with a rocket ship. In a rocket ship, let's go ahead and add a fuel source too. Rocket ship. Create rocket ship. Cool. Create rocket ship input. And then we've got our rocket. And number of wings. Mm, let's call it zero. And then fuel source. Let's say we're in the future and we're in the hydrogen fuel cell age and we're flying to Mars. And then we click create rocket. Okay, so that pretty much covers it. That's the scaffold schema designer and that's how you can rapidly build data models using the scaffold toolset. Hope you have a good day.